Hello there. This is Lego Dynasty, and today I'm bringing you guys my review of the Lego Idea Set The Office, based off of the hit television series. It is set number 21336, comes with 1,164 pieces, and is rated ages 18 and up. Now, of course, while the set is an 18 plus set, that just means it's marketed towards adults, but uh, children younger than that could definitely build this set. And I would actually say this is a very easy build process that very young kids, if they so wanted to build the set, definitely could without much, if any, adult supervision. Now this set retails in the United States for $119.99 and in Canada for $149.99. Now without further ado, let's kick off this review starting with the box. So as you can see, the box has the typical 18 plus black, you know, sort of outline with the set right in the middle, kind of having sort of a nice glow coming through uh, which might be sort of harder to see just with my ring light so apologies for that you see the information i said before the set number the part number and this is the lego ideas set uh number 44 so basically this was designed by just a fellow lego fan and submitted onto lego ideas and it was chosen as a set uh which is always great to see uh top of the box has all of the characters there's a total of 15 minifigures included in this set now, of course, while uh, there is a lot more characters in the show, I think them getting 15 of them into this set is actually pretty impressive. And, you know, when the set was first announced, uh, I'm sure a lot of people were thinking, you know, you might be lucky to get 10. So, of course, getting 15, I think, is very good, especially you do get some of the uh, more side characters um, in this set. And there's obviously some misses for characters from the that uh, didn't get included, but... Uh, it's the way it goes, and maybe if the set does well enough, they could eventually do a sort of maybe a sitcom minifigure collector series where they have figures from The Office and figures from other um, sets that they made that they weren't able to put into Lego form as they just didn't fit into the set. Now, flipping the box around, you can see there are some different sort of scenes. You know, there's not really much for play functionality in the set at all. It's a lot of just... Uh, I, I, I just guess uh, memes and a lot of you know you can sort of set up scenes from your sh the your favorite moments from the show so you know you have uh, the dropping of the uh, chili there you got the spatula or <laughs> spatula the stapler in the jello some other iconic scenes like uh, when Michael falls for the pyramid scheme just a lot of other iconic moments from the show that you can sort of reenact. But uh, overall, this set is mostly meant as a display, and that's why they marketed it towards uh, more adults, um, as uh, there's really no play functionality. Now, before we get into the actual set, I figure I'd show off the manual. Now, as an 18 plus set, these still get somewhat unique manuals. Now, unfortunately, it's been announced this will probably be changing in the new year with future sets like this, where it won't be as personalized. But this is absolutely awesome, you know, it's got some very nice sort of pictures, references to the office uh, set itself, you can see in their character forms, some great information there, getting into the build, pretty, generally a very simple build, um, there was some repetitive aspects, you have the parts included in the set, and then sort of interesting, they have the feedback and win uh, inside here. I've been noticed it would generally be at the back, but uh, the back of the manual has this, you know, Dunder Mifflin incorporated sort of thing to represent it sort of being like a binder, I guess. You can see some of the other Lego Ideas sets that are currently on the market. And then, yeah, that is the manual. Now, before I show off the set again, uh, I figure I show off one of the main drawbacks of the set, and that is the amount of stickers. So here is the completed sticker sheets. I will uh, put on uh, the image of the, how many stickers there were, like without them being put on right now. So as you can see, quite a few <laughs> stickers. And uh, while there is a variety of printed parts, it would have been nice if some of these stickers were printed as well, uh, just because you get so many and there that leads with that many, you know, in a repetitive or somewhat repetitive, you know, build environment not necessarily getting those stickers on right especially when there's so many and they're on the smaller tiles not you know larger tiles which are uh, in my experience at least a little bit easier to place on still uh 
obviously good that they included this detail. Just would have been nice if some of these stickers, and perhaps it was just a single sticker sheet rather than two sticker sheets, uh, just to represent the parts, I guess. Or, um, the and detail. lastly, before we move on, we do have a variety of extra pieces, as you can see, uh, including some uh, tiles here. Like this particular tile has a sticker on, as you can a, uh, adjust some of the like uh, scenery to represent, you know, scenes from the show. So, for instance, this is Diversity Day, uh, take two, which uh, I will show where that one would go. You also have this. Uh, one by two uh brick here and this actually could have been placed uh in a different part of the set to represent when there isn't a hole in the wall versus when there is which will show off later but overall quite a few extra pieces in this set as you can see a lot of tiles you have the nice little hard piece there brick separator of course not an extra piece just included uh to help with building moving on to our first minifigure in the set we of course have michael scott played by Steve Carell in the show, and he looks pretty good, I gotta say. He's got the nice printed, you know, suit there. Just looks great. No arm or leg printing, which uh, the amount of characters, I guess, sort of makes sense. Does have some back printing to represent sort of the crease of his jacket, and he does have a double-sided face, as I just knocked off his sort of accessory that he comes with, which is this uh, stickered tile. So this is an one of the first of many stickers and it's uh, a check written made out to science and uh, of course i won't go into exactly uh who he gives this check to but uh, if you remember the scene you know uh who this check ends up being given to which is just kind of sort of hilarious how that goes about it but it's meant to be a giant check that's why it's uh larger than what like a normal smaller check would be and it just looks like Have that, it look like that, and hand it to someone, uh, and just in general. Uh, it's a nice little detail for sure. Next character is Creed, and of course, as you can, uh, you might be able to tell, this is the exact same torso piece as comes with Michael Scott. So a little bit disappointing, it would be nice to see some variation, but they opted to just reuse the part. Now he has his uh, gray pants on instead, and uh, does not have a hair piece or double side face, as he is bald. And... Great minifigure, of course, to get. So Next, we'd be remiss not to talk about Dwight. And, gotta say, he's definitely one of my favorite characters in this set. He was just so, uh, sort of hilarious in The Office. So, and there's definitely a lot of references in this set specifically to antics involving Dwight or pranks played on Dwight, etc. Which is awesome to see. He's got the nice, uh, sort of tan suit. Looks excellent. Great torso print. And... Stop. His uh, his accessory is also another sticker piece, but it's a Dwight Buck, which is great to see. And he does have a double-sided face, so it's like so. Bit of focus. And that's how it looks with his hairpiece on. Next up, we have Pam, and uh, this is definitely one of the better... Uh, characters or uh, minifigures including the set just because of the attention to detail as she has the dual molded legs to represent her having a skirt on the blue skirt you can see her sort of skin showing and then the white so very good uh, leg detail there it's just excellent wrapped all the way around there also not on the back as they haven't really been able to master that she has some nice detail on her torso piece there and of course has her teapot and then her the back of her face kind of has her more you know uh, upset or shocked at something that happened versus her having more of a smirk uh, originally on and then of course uh, moving on from Pam we have Jim who obviously is definitely one of the uh, really memorable characters from the office of course and uh, he uh, unfortunately doesn't get uh, as for the detail, as I might have liked, you know, if they did something with the leg printing, they opted just to go with regular legs, or uh, not surprised they didn't do any arm printing. Also, with 15 minifigures, I guess it makes sense they would cut costs somewhere. Just would be nice, uh, as he is sort of plain uh, than I would have liked. I mean, I know he doesn't have the craziest detail. Like, this does capture his look pretty well, I would say. Just would be nice. Maybe I'm just asking for too much, though. 
but he does have this uh, printed envelope piece, which is a letter he gives to Pam. And then he, as well, also has a double-sided face. Moving him. on, we have Meredith, and uh, she also looks pretty darn good, gotta say. Great printed detail, nice hair piece, and uh, she's carrying on what I think is a new piece, though I could be wrong. Uh, it's a sort of molded piece to represent uh, coffee, I guess, or... And it just looks excellent because you can see the little indent meant to be where the characters would drink out of. See the nice torso prints, no leg uh, printing on the character or, of course, arm printing. And does have a more shocked face uh, on the back. This kind of uh, an ugly Christmas sweater outfit is what I would describe it as. Next up, we have Toby with his uh, trusty camera, of course, and his nicely printed suit in a more, you know, sort of yellowish rather than the sort of tan brown. And the back there, you can see some great detail. He as well does have a double-sided face with him more smiling. Moving on to our next character, we have Daryl. And he as well, again continuing, has a great nice printed torso. And then uh, some decent detail on the back. He's carrying a stickered piece on this tile that is uh, the Terry's Diner takeout menu, which is uh, obviously a reference. And he's got the smiling face there. And then, uh, uh, kind of surprisingly, does not have a second uh, face print, as most of the characters with uh, the head printing, or uh, with hair pieces at least, do come with uh, sort of a, a secondary face print. So, kind of surprising there. Moving on, we have Kelly, and she looks excellent as well. She's carrying a, uh, so it's a one by, or a two by two, you know, tile piece on top of a two by two brick piece uh, meant to represent her happy birthday Kelly cake. And then you can see very nice printed details. She's got the pink sort of pants on, nice yellow and blue shirt, and then some decent back printing. You can kind of see the creases there. And she does have a double-sided face looking like that. So the Moving room. on, we have Ryan, who's, of course, the office intern. He has the same torso print as uh, Jim. There uh, seems to be a slight uh, color difference in the tie, though that could just be the lighting here, and maybe it is the exact same, but in my experience, it is slightly more tinted than uh, Jim's, but it's still basically the same print, uh, as are some of these uh, suits. They're kind of reused just in different colors. And... He's got some decent back printing, I guess. You can kind of see. He does have uh, more of a bearded face, obviously, as he uh, kind of grows up on the show versus his more clean-shaven look. And he's carrying one of the only sort of printed tiles, uh, which is, I believe, meant to represent a cell phone, which is pretty nice to have. Moving on to our next character, we, of course, have Kevin, and he is carrying his infamous box of chili, and uh, it can spill out, which I'll show off later. But for now, it's basically just a couple of studs there. And you can spill it all over the floor like it happens in the show. He as well has nicely printed torso there with the tie on. And of course, sort of see the back printing there. He does have his bald spot uh, with this uh, very nicely designed uh, sort of new hair piece. I mean, obviously it's not a hair piece, but it's meant to represent his bald spot. Uh, he as well does not have a double side face, uh, which I can only assume is because uh, this uh, sort of bald spot doesn't allow it to go low enough for it to look decent enough, Is uh, would be my guess. Moving on to our next character, we have Angela, and she looks excellent. And uh, she's also carrying uh, the picture of the Jazz Babies, which of course is uh, using the Lego, you know, sort of mini baby uh, figurines to represent that, which I think is just perfect decision, and it looks very cute. And uh, again, this is a, another sticker piece on top of the tile. Uh, the torso print looks pretty decent overall. Got the nice yellow ponytail, and then does have the more smiley face for the double-sided. Next up, we have Oscar and his signature purple uh, sort of a jacket, or a dress shirt. And uh, obviously very signature of his character. And I believe he's carrying a calculator. And then he as well does have his sort of double-sided face print. With him more having a smirk. 
versus a more serious look uh, when he's sort of looking at the camera and is sort of upset. Our next character, one of the final ones in the set, is Phyllis, and she is uh, carrying uh, what appears to be sort of a knitting stick and then a ball of yarn to knit clothes, as she does on the show. Now, uh, originally, I put this sticker on a white tile and had to peel it off because uh, it wasn't. I didn't realize it was meant to go on a uh, clear piece, so you can kind of see uh, my sticker piece is a little bit damaged there. Kind of the annoying part about the stickers. Would have been nice if like a piece like this was printed, for instance. And finally, last but certainly not least, we have Stanley. And he's carrying his pretzel and his crossword puzzle in his nice gray suit, which I'll show off like so. And then he does have his more, uh, I guess, shocked face uh, that he shows off during the show. And this is all 15 characters uh, together. As you can see, quite a few characters. And overall, I got to say, uh, I think LEGO did a pretty good job of picking the characters. Obviously not perfect. There could have been a few other characters, but uh, I understand, obviously, why they couldn't. And I think with the size of the set, it actually makes sense to only have 15. Because having all 15 inside actually takes up quite a bit of the office uh, space on the set. Uh, so I think... 15 is a good number and definitely still a great value at its current price point. Now, let's move on to the actual office set. Now, of course, it goes without saying there are so many references to the set that um, chances are I'm going to miss some of them. So I'm going to try and get through as many of the references uh, that I can, as well as showing off some of the main functions of the set. But there are so many references that chances are I'll miss a few or there's just some I just won't remember from certain episodes. Uh, so I'll try and get to whatever I can, but apologies if I don't get to everything. So without further ado, let's do it. So starting off with what we can see right at the front here, you have these nice cabinets over to the side. And uh, the top one is empty, but this bottom one contains Angel's cat uh, named Trash, which she obviously hides inside one of the cabinets. Now a bunch of these uh, cabinets are going to be empty. Some might be open, but you can't open them. You can put stuff in there if you so desire. But I'm going to focus on ones that I know have stuff in them. Uh, we do have this nice little detail here, which I brought up before. Oh, actually, sort of broke off part of it, but uh, that's okay. At the top there, we have the stapler inside the Jello, which is a printed piece. Uh, one of the few, like, unique printed pieces in this set. And I think this is awesome from LEGO. I uh, would have liked to see a few more of these pieces uh, kind of printed than we, what we got. But, uh, Joseph said, that's a great piece there. Uh, to the side here, we have what I assume is a, either a printer or a photocopier. Uh, there's nothing inside it, unfortunately. No sort of references there that they could fit in. You have these nice sort of bookshelf builds. And you can see a nice layout of the set. Sort of turning it to the side. We have some of the different sort of uh, computers and whatnot, which I will bring up closer to give a more in-depth a uh, little bit later on, but you can kind of see some of the nice detail. And this is what I meant, like all of these sort of builds are very similar. There's some slight differences. Uh, you got this sort of nice reference, this uh, fire in the trash can there, as you can see. And then of course, to the side here, we have probably one of the main sort of references in the set, which is the sort of conference room or meeting room that they have, where a bunch of the memes uh, generally happen in this. So uh, you have this sort of whiteboard, uh, poster board build here. I believe it's supposed to be a whiteboard. And uh, on it, you have this nice towel piece. Again, another sticker. And this represents the sort of uh, pyramid scheme that Michael gets involved in and tries to get all of his co-walker, co-walkers, co-workers involved in uh, before Jim kind of shows him how it is a pyramid scheme at the end there. Now, to the side, I often put this tile here, this the Don't and Don't Bother Luke uh, sort of uh, reference here, which is excellent as well. And then if we move this sort of piece here, just off to the side, you do have this the TV screen, which can be replaced. Right now, it is referencing, you know, the DVD in the top corner there, which is a nice uh, sticker piece. Would have loved if that one was a printed piece. 
uh, but you do get some extra pieces that you can sort of reference uh, instead. So first one we have is a Lazy Scranton, uh, which is these two, you know, guys uh, referenced on the, this piece. And then you also have this sort of Dunder Mufflin piece, which is actually when Ryan does a webcast on TV to launch their new website. Uh, but Kelly smears the pizza on the front, which is why you can see the pizza sort of smearing down on the TV, which I think is a great, nice little printed piece, or not printed, uh, sticker piece there. So those can be replaced here. Uh, on this sort of uh, TV, uh, you can see there is actually a nice printed VCR piece there, which I think is excellent. Inside, you can see there's the It's Your Birthday sticker here. And uh, this is where you can replace with the uh, Diversity Day 2, which I will do right now. So as you can see, that's how it looks. So you can swap these two pieces out as you see fit uh, to whatever reference you want to make from the show. But you do have room for six characters. There is room for where uh, Jim and Pam would generally sit off to the side. Uh, but you still have quite a bit of playability. And you do have this opening door. Uh, which you can obviously reenact characters walking in and out as you see fit. And I should bring up, it also has these other two sticker pieces that are on the other side here actually, and they're kind of obscured by this uh, sort of little uh, cabinet desk area, I guess is how I would put it, with this stapler piece and then this plant on one side. You have this sticker to represent the blinds, these ones being sort of open with the fire uh, ongoing and then this one being closed so that's some nice detail you do have this very nice scenery piece again another sticker right there and then of course you also have this one with the blinds also uh, sort of half closed half open with these window pieces as well which this piece uh, can be opened they have that piece utilized a lot including for uh, Michael's office and then some other aspects of the set but so very nice uh, to have that taking a look you do have some more detail there so this is where you could place uh the hole not in the wall and then replace it if you wanted to I opted to just keep the hole in the wall because that's just a funnier reference I think to keep and uh with Michael's office we'll get to in a moment but you can open his door uh to see inside of course and then very similar here you do have the uh, blinds opened on one end and then closed on the other so theoretically if you wanted to have both blinds here closed you could have both blinds open there just uh take the set apart slightly and switch them if you wanted to uh i have to just go with how it was built uh on to the side here you can have the bat that was in the office you have these nice little couches and the front door there along with a little uh sort of fire extinguisher over there and then you do have the uh, printed scenery piece, or <laughs> I keep saying printed, but sticker piece here. Uh, would have been nice if some of these were actually printed, but such as the no smoking sign, which there are actually two of those in the set, which I'll show back again in a couple moments. You have this very nice build to represent the sort of like uh, bag or umbrella or I guess coat hanger. Of course, it's a lot harder for Lego to have coat hangers since... Uh, they're just printed parts. You can't really, unless you hang a whole torso on one of these, you can't really represent it that well. You do have uh, Pam's reception desk with the sort of loose uh, pen there. And then you have the empty cup, the lamp, uh, the sort of soup bowl, some other nice details. And then one of my favorite references in the set, you have uh, Dwight, ADM, do not drink the coffee, uh, future Dwight message that uh, was a prank by Jim. You do have these nice uh, sort of pieces. You can see there's some of the <laughs> crooked stickers I had there. Uh, quite a few, all of these here basically are stickers. You have the awards, the this, which appears to be a reference to the designers of this set, I believe is what I was reading about. And so that's nice to have that recognition of their initials, some other nice uh, pieces there. So you can of course fit Pam inside and she would look like so uh, in there while well, she's doing her work, which is uh, perfect. And then we have some of the other uh, sort of desks. So we have Dwight and Jim's desk. This one is obviously uh, Dwight's as it has his uh, stapler in the gel 
and then has his name tag to uh, make sure you know. In this sort of canvas area, there is the sort of sword stuck behind there. As I knock his desk, but you can see Dwight has his desk here. He's got the uh, sort of Shroot Farms. As you can see there, he's got his typical sticker pieces uh, to represent the phones, which is what 90% or uh, most of the desks have. There's only one difference in Michael's desk, which we will get to. And then we have uh, Jim's uh, sort of computer screen where he's uh, emailing, looks like. Uh, unfortunately, not big enough to tell what that's a reference to. But you can fit both Jim and Dwight into their desks. Now, uh, there are two hidden items inside these uh, desk areas, one of which is uh, Dwight's sort of nunchucks, which, as you can see, you can pull out like so. Yeah. And then the other reference is to uh, Jim and uh, Pam getting engaged, as he has a ring there which uh, you are given uh, those extra pieces as well, uh, those ring pieces, which is nice. So you have uh, Dwight and uh, Jim sitting at their desks. Now, right before we move on to Michael's office, you can see we have this nice front door, which can be opened up. It has the sticker piece there of Dunder Mifflin, and it opens up like that to allow you to come into the office. Now, the reason I opted to wait uh, to showcase uh, sort of Michael's office is it has the one main sort of play feature, which is you can actually fully pull this out and get full sort of 360 degree access, or at least better access to the set uh, to placing your characters inside. And inside this office, we have quite a few references to the show. So you have the sort of eagle here in the back. You do have some other nice Again, mostly sticker details, but you do have Michael's World's Best Boss mug there. You do have some other sort of motivational posters like leadership and then the nice scenery there, the lamp uh, as well. Some of the other sort of obscure references is on this phone you have Jan, who is of course uh, Michael's ex-girlfriend or I guess sometimes girlfriend in the show, uh, calling him who is also happens to be his boss. You have the Hiya Buddy note from Pam. And then you have Michael listening to some music on the job. And then off to the side, you have the sort of map, which looks great. Another sort of uh, award or designation. You do have the uh, very nice piece here to represent the globe, which is awesome. You see some of the other sort of pieces in there. And then probably one of the best references in the set, which is, uh, oh, I think I put it in the bottom one. All right, here, managed to find it. Uh, this is a another sticker piece, but it's a sketch of the threat level midnight uh, sort of screenplay that Michael wrote. Uh, obviously a very funny moment from the show. So with the desk out, you can actually get a little bit more access and see some other references that have the uh, sort of chair fall out. But you have the nice uh, sort of carpet surprise that he finds under his desk, which is also, again, another funny moment from the show. So some very obscure references, of course. Do you have the golden ticket uh, pick, uh, sticker piece there? And you do have some some okay room in the office. I mean, this particular seat, I don't think you'd really be able to fit much of a character inside, uh, just with how the uh, sort of stuff around the minifigure would be. But you have room there for two characters to sit, and that is Michael's office. So the reason it can slide out is you do have those little, I guess, uh, track pieces, essentially. And then over here, you can see there is room for it to just slide right in. So you just line it up. And it just slides right in. Now, uh, it can fall out. Like, I I found it it isn't hold the, like, strongest in there. So, you definitely want to be careful when you're holding the set. And definitely, perhaps, grab in the middle between these two pieces. Rather than just grab from here. Because this part can fall out, depending on how you grab it. But overall, it is a very sturdy build. 
And to my surprise, I actually expected this set would be a just a base plate, but this is actually a like a bunch of plates built on rather than uh, just being a singular base plate, which I think they probably could have just done it as a base plate. Uh, it might have saved some parts uh, overall, you know, because there is quite a few different plates, but they wanted to, I guess, sort of differentiate, and it definitely enables the ability to pull this out, which you wouldn't have on a regular base plate. So this is definitely a feature that uh, they really wanted to include, I guess, because, uh, and I actually really like it, being able to pull out this, uh, the desk aspect, or desk, the office, uh, as it allows you to really get a little bit more room. As you have room here in this conference room, you have generally a lot of room inside the office, but uh, it's very cramped in Michael's office. So being able to pull out and uh, place your characters how you want them is definitely a nice feature because if you weren't able to pull this out, that would definitely be a negative as it would be too cramped for you to really do much without knocking everything over all the time. And that is the Lego The Office set. So let me know your guys' thoughts on this set in the comments down below. Personally, I gotta say this is definitely my favorite Lego sitcom related set that they have released. I definitely think it's the best one. Uh, and it definitely has by far the most value. Uh, 15 minifigures, like you can't go wrong with that. And like I said, yeah, could they have had more characters uh, as minifigures? Sure. And is that a slight negative? Perhaps, but I think for what they designed, uh, I think LEGO did an excellent job with its character selection, and I just think uh, the amount of references to the show is astounding, and uh, the biggest negative of the set for me is just the amount of stickers. Would have been nice to see more of these pieces actually included as printed elements. I'm not saying every single sticker had to be a printed element, but just some of the smaller pieces, you know, the no smoking signs, uh, some of the other ones that were a bit common, perhaps some of the computer screens, for instance, could have been nice as printed pieces instead uh, just because at the end of the day uh, there's quite a few stickers and that's by far the biggest negative to me personally with that being said I still love this set I think it's absolutely a must-have if you're an office fan if, whether you're a moderate fan like I am or a super fan you're gonna love this set for the amount of references it has for the amount of minifigures and characters from the show it has and that's all there is to it. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the set in the comments down below. This has been Lego Dynasty. Please leave a like and subscribe if you have enjoyed. And have a great day, everyone.